-hmm. When people find out that I'm from Russia, they always ask, where in Russia? And I always feel like replying, why? Because people here think that all of Russia is Moscow. We lived in Vladivostok, and it's um, the biggest city and forest of Russia, considered the most corrupt and um, unpleasant to live city, kind of forgotten. My earliest memory is of uh, my drunk father trying to hit my mother. I was four, so I didn't really know what was going on, but I would put my hands into a TV frame and pretend that my parents were on TV and that they were dancing and singing and not fighting. My husband hit me, and uh, when he hit me, nobody did it to me before, so it was... It made me very angry, so I hit him back. I told him that I'll leave him, and I did. We went to live with my grandma. My grandma was really mad at my mom for divorcing my father. My grandma basically believed that men have the right to beat women as much as they wanted. I had to get a job as a doctor in prison. The people who run the prison were worse sometimes than people who were prisoners. Part of my job was to certify this as an accident. If I had a guy with broken neck, I refused to tell that it was accident, so I put the truth into my records. The men who ran the prison threatened me that I should start watching my back because accident could happen to me. It was a dark time, but it was a really exciting time for me too. Our country was broken. They were teaching us communist propaganda and I would stand up and say, uh, you're teaching us lies. There were cracks in the Iron Curtain and then suddenly, like a huge explosion, change came. Communists were attempting a coup, but they failed. And Yeltsin took over, Soviet Union collapsed. I remember watching the news at our neighbors, and all of us, old and young, were crying because none of us thought that this could happen in our lifetime. Things seemed to be improving. We had more food in the store, we had more freedom, and uh, we had American movies. American movies are what changed it all. The first few American movies I experienced, I didn't actually watch. You'd hang out with your friends, and maybe one of them would see an American movie and he would tell it to us in great detail. And then I would retell this movie to other people and you would tell it to your friend and they would tell it to somebody else. And one day we had this great chatter in our neighborhood. People were saying, at 9 p.m., turn your TV to channel three. And this didn't seem possible because for as long as I remember, we only had two channels. Of course, I came home and I waited and waited and waited. Finally, this movie came up and it was Ghost and it was the most beautiful, magical movie I've seen. We loved Whoopi Goldberg so much. In the days and weeks after, um, The Secret Renegade Channel number three would show other movies, movies like Labyrinth and Legend, movies with Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. All of American movies in Russia were dubbed by this one guy who sounded like this, uh, supposedly because he was trying to disguise his voice. There were a couple of movies that really spoke to us. Curly Sue, about a homeless man and his daughter. Adam's Family, the second Adam's Family, and Beetlejuice. Home Alone. Pretty Woman. Gremlins. Frankie and Johnny, with Michelle Pfeiffer and Al Pacino. <sighs> Michelle Pfeiffer's little apartment was so cozy, and I thought, if Potato and I could live in such a little place, I would be so happy and did not need anything else, certainly not Al Pacino. The more movies we watched, the clearer it became that America was the place to be. The new Russia was not much better than the old USSR. The same thugs who ran the country before were still running it, even though they called themselves capitalists instead of communists, they were still stealing money from people. They call it privatization, which basically meant that if you were a politician, you could gift public property to your friends and family. We started to have blackouts. Potato had to study every night by candlelight. We were told that the region does not have money for heat or electricity or water. The local politicians were building mansions right outside the city limits. My school, my neighborhood were overrun by gangs. I had to carry a butcher's knife to school to feel safer. 
Things seem to be getting worse and worse because Wes was growing up and I was so afraid that he will be drafted into to the army. Very few things are more horrible than Russian army. I've always felt a little different from my friends, but I didn't give it much thought. I did feel lost when my friends would talk about girls because I couldn't relate to it. Still, I didn't understand why girls didn't interest me. I thought maybe it's because I'm such a good Christian boy. But I did have thoughts. Like when I found out that my swimming coach, uh, who was very good looking, got arrested for burglary. This uh, really stimulated my imagination. I would bunch up a blanket between my thighs and fantasize about being a cop, apprehending my naughty swimming coach, stripping him naked, spanking him, tying him up and keeping him under my bed. And still I didn't really know what it all meant and it would never occur to me that I was one of those people. We did not know anything about gay people back then. then. They did not exist. Every day of my childhood I heard terrible things said about faggots or those pedics. Uh, in Russia, pedic meant gay, but it could also mean pedophile. The way people talked about it, it was just filled with so much hate and fear and disgust. I wasn't even sure if gay people were real or they were made up monsters. He came to me crying. He was so afraid and embarrassed. I told mom that I've been masturbating. I told her that my biology book said that Masturbation is very dangerous to your health. And it also said that the way to stop masturbating is by exercising. But I was already rowing, running, swimming. I was a full-time jock. But no amount of exercising made me less horny. I was so relieved. I told him it was okay. Everybody does it, men and women. Even grandma, I said. Even the grandma? It's not going to hurt you. And your biology book is outdated garbage. That was a huge relief, but I still didn't tell mom that I was thinking about boys. I didn't think she could handle the idea of how hard my life would be in Russia. I don't remember exactly when I decided that I want to marry American. Mom was saying that she was disillusioned with a Russian men, so she started applying to all those mail order bride catalogs. I became pen pals with an old American gentleman was very excited that I was a Russian Orthodox. He seemed nice and kind. James lived in Seattle, and that's where he brought me to visit. At first, everything was great. He was very kind and fatherly to me, but also he would lose his patience quite often. I also realized that our concept of religion was different. When mom came back, she was glowing, and then she took out the string, and that's when I knew that her and James got married. I remember us getting on a plane, and I remember saying that when we get to America, we'll get on our knees and kiss the ground. I knew my son was safe now, and as long as we remain in this country, he has future. Every day was a new adventure. Picking out new school, going to a supermarket that has everything, walking down the street and people smile at you instead of scowling, and just being in a place that doesn't feel like the end of the world. James was exactly like he was during my visit. One moment he was the kindest, most caring person, the other he was simmering with rage, and I did not know why. James was a Christian fundamentalist, and he started to realize that I was not religious in a way he hoped, so he started lashing out at me. James often threatened to kick us out. Usually it was when he sensed that I'm not as excited to go to church as he was, or I said something that was against his interpretation of religion, like I mentioned that I strongly support legal abortion, and I learned quickly not to say it again. He was always ranting about politics and religion. He was really angry about the state of the world and secular schools and Clintons and the gay rights movement. I could see that my son was going through something and I was concerned because he would not tell me what it was. One day I decided to tell mom. I could tell from TV, movies, and school discussions that I wasn't the only gay in the world and that in America, gay people have been fighting for equal rights and winning. I was so relieved. Just like when he told me that he was masturbating, I thought it was something bad. All she said was, that's it, you're gay. Everyone's a little gay. And he said, Mom, I'm really, really gay. That felt so strange and incredible to tell someone. 
because I've never told anyone and now I could tell my best friend and she didn't care. But we could not let James know. He would divorce me and would kick us back to Russia. I started to hate James, like really, really hate James. I hated seeing how he treated my mom and how afraid she was of him. And also every day after school, I could come home and research gay history online and finding out about all the gay people who have been abused throughout history and written out of history made me really angry. And James was the personification of that. I could see he was troubled, he was angry, and he had reasons to be angry, but also he was a teenager, so all his emotions were heightened. I tried to calm him, explaining to him that it will get better, we just have to wait. When I turned 18, my mom and I found a place where I could live by myself. After Potato moved out, I started to notice a change in James. One night, mom called crying. I came home from work. There was a woman sitting on our sofa. She saw this strange woman in her house wearing a wig. It took me a moment to realize it was James. The woman was actually James, wearing women's clothes. Or Janice, as she introduced herself. James came out to mom as transgender that night. She told me that her mom and grandma beat her when she tried her little cousin's dresses. We were holding hands and were crying, and my heart was breaking for the person I knew and I didn't know. James slash Janice told mom that he tried to marry a Russian woman because he thought that Russian women are really conservative and religious. And it turned out that my mom was like the least conservative and the most open-minded and accepting person that he's met. And that made him feel very conflicted until he finally had courage to come out to her. I cannot say it was easy finding out that my husband is a woman. In some sense, he was the first real man in my life, the man I could count on. But it was not about me because Janice needed support and unconditional love. Mom became sort of like a groupie to Janice and her trans girlfriends. Janice especially liked karaoke. That was karaoke night after night after night. That was when I decided it's time to divorce and move out. Transgender was fine with me, but karaoke, nobody wants karaoke every night. Janice passed away a year ago. Me and my mom went to see her in the hospital and we held her hand and told her how much we love her. And I hope she could hear us. My marriage with James was a roller coaster but I will always feel connected with Janice. She brought my son to America and she gave us a real future. Back in Russia, it was American movies that helped us survive because they always had happy endings. Now we're living our own happy ending. I guess life does have those sometimes.